Oh, hey guys. Um, in this one, I'm going to teach you how to make piano melodies. Uh, I, I thought this was a good way of kind of falling back into the rhythm of making tutorials because I haven't really been making any for the past two weeks. I don't, even, I don't know if you guys really noticed, uh, but that's because I had exams and everything and I was pretty busy. But um, this has been requested a few times, so I thought maybe this would be um, a good opportunity to, uh, I don't know, answer to that. Um, so there you go, piano melodies. Uh, I, I have Nexus, Nexus Grand Piano, and um, I, I turned up the release to around like 80 some, and that just kind of s simulates a uh, sustained pedal that you normally have with a, an actual piano. Um, now I don't really have any high standard piano plugins, and that's because not only do they cost a fortune, but they're like 50 gigabytes long at least, or large. So that's 50 gigabytes I don't really have um, for a piano plugin. Therefore, I'm just going to stick with good old Nexus, and I'm sure you guys can too. Um, if not, there's like FL Keys and, and, and whatever that's on FL Studio already and other stuff in the browser. Um, but uh, just get your pianos out, and then we're going to make a melody. So I'm going to try to make something relatively realistic. I, I want to kind of simulate an actual pianist playing the piano. Um, now when I play the piano, I don't usually bang each key at the same velocity, at the same force, making the same, um, I don't know, sounds, the same um, volume, I should say, of the sound. Uh, I, I usually kind of go like soft and kind of louder for some notes, but we're kind of, we're going to simulate that by using the velocity stuff here. Um, I just call it the, the ostriches or the ostrich faces because they kind of look like ostriches um, but yeah so enough of that I'm going to start making this melody um, now I don't really know what I'm gonna do to be honest but you can kinda start with the left hand um, so that'd be kinda like starting your chord progression or your bass line whatever you like to call it um, some people like to actually start with the melody itself so if you want something fluent you're gonna have to kind of go from on beat to off beat, um, and we can kind of get lost. So I'm gonna have this hi hat, keeping us steady, um, just kind of uh, beating at the tempo. This is gonna be kind of like this trancey thing, I guess, um, because I think trance really does use that fluent, realistic stuff, um, at, at least the uplifting stuff, anyway. So. Uh, Now I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna try to play on the keyboard that I have in front of me. So if you're trying to get something fluid, you're gonna need some nice little chords. This would be D sharp major. Oops. So try to kind of pick some notes, something like that, and kind of create a melody out of it. So if I had, It's good to kind of mess around with the lengths of the notes, um, but I think that kind of <laughs> sums it up pretty well. So that could be like the start. Um, so that'd be my right hand. Um, I could play it. And then I could have something on my left hand. 
So uh, G sharp. I could also start with D D sharp, which is the key of the song. But starting with uh, G sharp would be wise because of the way um, we can kind of ascend up the keyboard. So G sharp, A sharp, C, then D sharp would be the key of the song there. So um, we're gonna kind of have this augmenting um, chord progression, which is uh, a, a personal preference of mine. So um, I'm gonna go up to D sharp. Or, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go up to D sharp, and then I'm gonna do this weird little thing where you kind of go D sharp, and then hit the one underneath, but you keep the same chords on top. So if I had B flat, for example, the perfect fifth, um, I could keep that here. And I'm sure you all heard this kind of these kind of chords before, but I think that might be. That might sound okay. So if I had something like this. Something you'll notice when you play the piano is um, you don't hit the left hand and the right hand the exact same time. What I usually do anyway is I'll hit the chord on my left hand and then I usually wait like a like half a second and then I play on my right hand. So for example. That's my left hand right here. So um, keeping that in mind, don't always start the notes like exactly at the same time. Leave your left hand first and then maybe have the right hand come in. So just something to keep in mind, just little tips I guess. So this is kind of where the um, imagination, creativity part comes in, because whatever kind of comes after this is generally something that um, I kind of come up with um, based on, you know, my mood and kind of whatever creativity, uh, imagination, imaginative melody s stuff I can come up with. I don't know how to explain it. It's really just me thinking what could come next and just naturally um, putting in and some people have a hard time with this because they they don't know how keys work and stuff like that but uh, if I took out picture and I know I've done this before uh, I'll just do it really quick uh, if I take out the picture for example I don't know why I like this so much but it's just the fact that it, it's it's like a visual um, don't put this on the master channel just put it on an empty channel by the way we're on, we're on the D sharp major key so major D sharp and there all the light up notes here so C D D sharp F G etc. Um, these these are the notes of the scale of, of the key that we're in or notes of the key. This is the scale. Um, so whenever you're gonna place notes like I am right now, hit all of these notes. Don't hit C sharp. Don't hit E. Don't hit F sharp. Don't hit A. Don't hit B um, because that's gonna sound off. So that's generally the basic idea of scales um, and keys. So there you go. Um, I'm just going to keep doing this now. Sorry about that. I got sidetracked there.
So um, I'm sure you've noticed how kind of offbeat this sounds. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys kind of know what offbeat is, but where to place the offbeat is anywhere is like this note here. This note is kind of in the middle in between the keyboard and the next kind of thick line here. So anywhere is in between that. Um, this is an offbeat, 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 offbeat. This is onbeat. And the reason why I know it's onbeat is because it's against this thick line. Um, you probably can't see it, but it's against this slightly thicker line on the grid um, and if it's kind of in between two thick lines like this note here not that note not that note but uh, this note here this one or any of the first ones that means it's offbeat now if it's in between in between then it's then it's something else and I, I probably couldn't even tell you but um, anyway let's just let's just keep doing this now we could kinda just keep looping this four bar thing but I, I like to kinda keep it going um, it's good to not just loop the same piano melody I think that's something that a lot of people do and it's pretty irritating um, I don't just keep on looping the same eight bars or whatever I usually um, when I play piano I usually just keep on playing and uh, so if you're gonna make a piano me melody try to make it quite long um, now that doesn't mean like make this super long kind of crazy thing it just kind of means that you could just kind of loop all of this over but just change a few minor things so it doesn't sound like the exact same thing over and over and over again um, also to change the velocity as well down here so it sounds like an actual person is playing it but we'll get into that I'm talking way too much So I want to go into this like minor thing. Now in D sharp, the minor key would be, or the minor chord would be C. So Thank you. 
So I'm hoping you guys are kind of getting the idea. It's all really experimental and moving notes around. Um, but um, I don't know if this actually sounds very good um, or very fluent. I know it sounds pretty good, but uh, there's certain things I, I had to kind of move around, like that minor chord I was talking to you about earlier. I thought I brought that in a little too early. Um, and you might, you guys might have noticed how I kind of kept the melody going here. So instead of just like looping it, I kind of kept the melody going into the next section of the uh, overall loop. Instead of just like letting it loop over. So that's something to take um, or to consider when you're actually making these longer melodies. Um, so yeah, now we should probably get into the... Uh, velocities of the notes because if we don't we're gonna run on so much time it'll be ridiculous so uh, let's kind of start with the left hand so I'm gonna outline all the notes of the left hand which is kind of like the bass line and uh, I'm gonna make these ones softer so I'm gonna kind of put it in between like the like underneath these lines here um, I could put it even lower if I wanted to so something like this right I like to keep the bass line notes lower especially when it's um chords so that's just gonna make it sound softer I consider when you're actually doing this on your own to uh, really like adjust and listen to every single one of these and make sure it does sound very realistic and not just kind of I don't know do this and then say you're done um, but uh, yeah so but I'm going to kind of be doing that today just because it might take a little while to do this. But um, just kind of imagine someone actually playing the piano and how it should actually sound to be really meaningful. So here we're kind of going up the keyboard. So whether so we kind of have the choice whether we want to um, make it sound like it's going or it's getting louder when it's going up the keyboard or we can make it sound like it's going softer as it's going up the keyboard. I kind of like the second uh, option which is kind of going softer. notes like that definitely bring those down So I guess you guys kind of get the idea. It's really moving around uh, the strength of each individual note so that it sounds uh, uh, actually played and not just recorded um, over the piano roll where some robot kind of takes over. Um, I'm sorry you guys can't really like actually see everything that's going on down here. Um, I guess that kind of sucks, but I, I try my best to stretch it out as high as I could so that you guys can see it. Um, now the last thing I like to do is the actual reverb itself. Um, I like using the the Karma reverb when um, using piano. I guess I should EQ first. And you should take out midsection, then something like this. Uh, a little bit of the lows too. depends on exactly what piano you have. Sometimes you don't really need to EQ it. 
Um, but yeah, sorry. Back into the Karma effects reverb. This is free reverb uh, plugin. All the Karma stuff, I'm pretty sure, is um, like the filter, equalizer, and delay. So you guys might want to look into that if you're interested. Um, now I'm just going to do this quick. So the type of reverb, uh, just keep on hitting this until you get the space. I like the space one. I think it sounds nice. Uh, and it kind of sounds stringy. Um, I'm gonna bring the high pass up a little bit. Um, it's kind of like having a low cut. Um, and we want to sound pretty reverberated, so I'm gonna bring up the decay like 4,000 milliseconds. It's pretty, it's pretty high, I know, but uh, I quite like it. A little bit of pre-delay. Um, bring the wetness up a bit. That's just kind of increasing the uh, overall reverb effect. Um, I think we almost got it. I'm really looking for that kind of airy um, reverb, I guess. So that's why I'm removing a lot of the low, the low end. Um, then you can add a little bit of delay, put the time to like 4-ish or 4.02. Um, ping pong, of course, and then something like this. I'm not really wasting too much time with the effects, but it's just an example of how you can uh, set it up. Um, I wouldn't really use a compressor or anything else. This pretty much uh, settles seals the deal um, and I'm just gonna move the stereo shaping I think that kinda makes it sound more pro when you have like the kick and everything going over it <laughs> Thank you. 